A little over a year ago, the president announced he was walking away from an international deal to limit Iran's nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. According to his own administration, Iran was fully complying with the restrictions that were imposed by that deal on enrichment and on its nuclear stockpiles. Nevertheless, the president ripped it up, withdrew the U.S. from six-party pact, and reimposed sanctions. Broke the terms of the deal. One year later, the chickens are coming home to roost. Iran is now threatening openly to exceed the limit on its stockpile of enriched uranium in just 10 days. That is, of course, the exact situation that the nuclear deal was created to prevent, the deal that Donald Trump walked away from for no discernible reason. But this latest development comes amid rising tensions between the U.S. and Iran over attacks on shipping in the Middle East. As some of the president's closest advisors continue to push for further escalation. Tonight, the, pre the Pentagon just announced it's sending 1,000 additional troops to the region for what it is calling defensive purposes. Some of the president's allies are not content to stop there. These unprovoked attacks on commercial shipping warrant a retaliatory military strike. Are you... You're comparing the tanker war in the 80s to now and saying that that's the kind of military response you want to see? We can make a military response in a time and in a manner of our choosing. But yes, unprovoked attacks on commercial shipping warrant a retaliatory military strike against the Islamic Republic of Iran. I'm joined now by Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut, a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Do you agree with your colleague Tom Cotton that there should be a U.S. military strike on Iran? Well, that's an extraordinary precedent to set, that the United States has a defense obligation to come to the aid of commercial shipping companies. It may be that the Iranians instigated this attack, as Secretary Pompeo said this weekend, but none of that evidence has been provided to Congress yet. Uh, and what we can say with definitiveness is that uh, the Trump administration's policy towards Iran thus far has been an unmitigated disaster. Uh, he inherited a relationship uh, that uh, needed a lot Lots and lots of work. Uh, the Iranians were still engaged in all sorts of bad behavior in the region, but they were not actively threatening U.S. forces. They were not launching attacks against commercial interests uh, at sea, and they were not restarting their nuclear program. All three of those things are happening now, and there seems to be no way out of this uh, other than this new suggestion of a military strike. My worry, Chris, is that there are people inside the administration that think that you can get away with a, a time-limited uh, military campaign against Iran. Uh, ultimately, I think that if we begin that campaign, there is no seeming end to it, which is why I'm pretty worried. Well, yeah, I mean, you got the Brett Stevens New York Times columnist calling for the same thing that Tom Cotton called for. This has become a talking point in the last three days, right? Like, the U.S. should just have a military strike. There's, of course, the little question of the Constitution, whether it would be legal. Um, the, this is what Mike Pompeo said when asked about legal authorization for a military strike against Iran. Take a listen. Do you have the legal authorization for a strike on Iran? We, we always have the author authorization to defend American interests. Remember, they now have attacked uh, U.S. aircraft. They, on June 6th, there was a missile fired from Yemen with, that we assess had Iranian assistance that took down an MQ-9 aircraft. These are attacks on fundamental international norms and now on American interests. And we always have the right to defend our country. Is that true? It's fundamentally not true. The president does not have unchecked Article II authority to launch war against a country overseas simply to defend American interests. Um, now, a president can take a short-term military action uh, to defend against an imminent attack, but you don't have the broad authority to defend against prospective attacks on American interests. And by the way, this idea of American interests is a, um, a new paradigm without end. Um, I have no idea how to defend and explain what American interests are. Uh, and apparently the administration has a very wide ranging view of that. I, I am glad you said that because I can't tell if I'm losing my mind every time I hear that term invoked. There are literally millions of American interests around the globe. Like there's, you know, name a country in the world. It's got American interests. There's some American interest, there's some American business is doing business there. Maybe there's some students there. Like that just seems an utterly deranged way to define the ability to make war. 
Well, and then add to it the fact that they apparently are, are prepared to go to war against Iran for anything that anyone affiliated with Iran does right. um, that touches anything somehow connected to American interests. So I, I will not sit here and defend Houthi fired missiles into Saudi Arabia, but the Houthis do not have a command and control relationship with the uh, Iranian government. This is a rebel group inside Yemen, and we do not have a defense uh, agreement with the Saudi Arabian government. And yet, apparently, if the Houthis fire missiles into Saudi Arabia, um, that could drag the United States into um, a, a war that could last years. Are there votes in the Senate on the Republican side to to override anything they do here? I, I, I don't know. I mean, there's certainly nothing uh, in Republicans' behavior in the Senate in the past to suggest there are enough. Uh, we put forward a war powers resolution um, limiting the president's authority to go to war inside Yemen, uh, and we got only a handful of Republican votes. We have a piece of legislation that's pretty simple that says the president can't take preemptive military action against Iran without congressional authority. We offered that for a vote in the Foreign Relations Committee a week or so ago and only got maybe one or two Republican votes. So uh, I worry that the Republicans are prepared to defend the president's actions here no matter what. Quickly, one to ten, how worried are you about where this is going right now? I don't know that I'd put a number on it, but um, a, a thousand new troops into the region, vague talk about needing our allies to support some campaign that's coming. And again, this talk that we hear sometimes informally from the administration that they think that they could get away with a military campaign against Iran yeah. uh, that could be contained um, make me uh, more worried today than I have been at any other point during this crisis. All right, Senator Chris Murphy, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.